want to just give you some scripture today and share with you for just a moment of why he came. Aren't you glad he came today? Amen. Come on, honestly, how many lift your hand today? Say, I'm glad that he came. I'm glad that he came into my life. I'm glad that, amen, when I was a young man, a young boy, amen, I, I've, I've grew up in church. I know all about church, but I'm telling you, there was a moment in my life that I come in reality with who he was and who he is in my life, and he changed everything. He changed everything in my life. And I know today that he can change everything in your life and change situations and change things that's happening in your homes and, and, and everything that's around you and in you. He can move in that. And I thank God that he done that and came and gave us his son. We've been sharing this story this entire month. We've been talking about who he was and the difficulty of how it was for him to get here. I, I don't know if you realize how difficult it was for the birth of Jesus to be here and him to live. All the things that was going on, all of the political things that was happening during that time of him being born and, and Herod even saying, I'm going to kill every child from two years old and younger to try to destroy the promise of God. See, the enemy has always known, amen, that God was going to redeem us, that something was going to happen, something that was going to change our world. Aren't you glad that he changed our world from that moment that he was born I mean we, we can't even fathom it we can't even put it in our mind but the star that was over Bethlehem that sat there when this child was born I mean everything changed from that moment everything we see him being born in the scripture in Matthew and Luke and all the different scriptures but I want to read a scripture to you today in Luke the 22nd chapter or the 22nd uh, uh, chapter verses 25 and it says this, it says, At the time there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon. He was a righteous and devout and was eagerly waiting for the Messiah to come and rescue Israel. Listen to this, the Holy Spirit was upon him and had revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. He would not pass away until he'd seen this moment, this time, the, 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 the time that would change everything. And then verse 27, he said, In that day the Spirit led him to the temple. I believe today that in this place that the Holy Spirit has led some folks to this place, to this moment, to this time that's in this room today that, that, that the Holy Spirit has brought you to this moment in time, just like he did Simeon. And then he goes on to say then, So when Mary and Joseph came to present the baby Jesus to the Lord as the law required as we did even this morning we dedicated the babies to the Lord that was what they was doing that day was bringing him as the law required to, to dedicate this child verse 28 it says Simeon was there and he took the child into his arms and he praised God saying sovereign Lord now let your servant die in peace as you have promised I have seen your salvation Ooh, he was prophesying right then. Most people didn't even know what was going on, but he was prophesying to that generation, that people, I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all people. He is a light to reveal God to the nations and in his glory. And he is the glory of your people, Israel. And Jesus' parents were amazed at what was being said about him. Why were they amazed? Because this was confirming what the angel had already said to them. This was a confirmation to them. How I many knows that sometimes you need a confirmation about some stuff in your life? That's what was going on. They, they knew this. They knew this in their heart. The angels had come to them and said, you're going to bear the son and he's going to be the savior of the world. Not a whole lot of other people knew that. Not a lot of people knew what was going on, but when they brought him to this temple eight days later, this was happening. Simeon began to prophesy to them and said, hey, this is what's going to happen. He's going to be a savior to everyone. He is, prepared, he is prepared a way. He is a light of God that's going to be revealed to all nations. And Jesus' parents were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed him and he said to Mary, the baby's mother, this child is destined to cause many in Israel to fall. But he will also be a joy to many others. He has been sent as a sign from God, but many will oppose him. And as a result, the deepest thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your very soul. What Simeon was really saying that day, and he was telling the mother of Jesus that everyone is either going to receive him or not. The Bible tells us that every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue will confess that He is Lord. But not everybody is going to accept that. 
Not everybody's going to hear that. But I pray today that you hear it. I pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost that's in this room today that you'll hear what the Scripture is saying to this generation and to this people that a son was born unto us. Can I tell you, that child, that baby changed everything. Changed everything. And that's what Simeon was telling from this moment. Even our time was, was around that. A.D. And, and, and after death, we see these things. We see all these things from the moment of time was even changed. From the birth of this son. God was so distant up to that moment. God was in a place that they had to come and they had to go through priests and go through all these other rituals and things. But now God was saying, no, I'm fixing to change everything. And now my son is going to be born unto you, Emmanuel, God with us. He dwelt among us. He came to this earth to live in us and then he said I must go away and when I go away the Holy Spirit is going to come it's the promise of the Father and he's with us in this room today and and I don't know about you but I can feel his presence today I can sense and feel what God is wanting to do with this birth of Jesus and most of his life was really exceedingly simple when you begin to look at it, you're like, he was born in a manger. He was born in a cave. He was born in a, a place that was so obscure that, that, that it was really not what they was expecting. They thought a king was coming. But he is the king of the world. He is the king of the world. But it was so simple. Jesus was born in the poorest of circumstances to a working class family. He spent the first 30 years of his life as a carpenter's son and in, in obscurity, in a place that really nobody even knew where he was at. Didn't have a whole lot of money. Didn't, didn't even travel more than 100 miles from his home. He didn't even go a whole lot of places. He never wrote a book. He never ran for office. He never married. He never had children. But at the age of 30, he started his ministry, which lasted only three years. He was, for the most part, a homeless during this time. However, if in this short period of time, there was more miracles that took place in all of humanity. In this short period of time, there was uh, the poor that was being fed, the sick that was being healed, <laughs> lives that were being changed, the demonstration of God on earth in, in Him and through Him that was changing the world. Can I tell you, that baby changed everything. That child changed everything the world amen not to mention his death and burial and resurrection he died so that we can live he died so that we can have life today and I know I'm a little emotional about this today but it's so powerful to me because I know what I'm speaking about today I've experienced amen his life amen I've experienced what he's done in in my life Jesus is the most transformational person who ever lived in life there's been more books written about him. There's been more songs sung about him. There's been more uh, artwork commissioned because of him than any other person that's ever lived in humanity. Him and 12 men and then all of a sudden begin to reach out to the church that changed a world that started on one day in Bethlehem when a child was born into a manger. When a king come to this earth and God changed everything, this child changed it all for me and you so that we can experience life, so that we can experience what it is to know what freedom is today. Amen. In the midst of chaos, in the midst of fear and anxiety and all the things that's going on on earth, we can understand what peace is, the peace that passes all understanding. There was a song that was written about him. We've been doing this series on the Christmas playlist that Faith Hill sings. It says, a baby changed everything. And I want to read the words to you today. It says, a teenage girl, much too young, unprepared for what's to come. A baby changes everything. Not a ring on her hand, all her dreams and all her plans. A baby changes everything. The man she loves, she never touched. How will she not lose his trust? A baby changes everything she has to leave go far away heaven knows she can't stay a baby changes everything she can feel he's coming soon there's no place there's no room a baby changes everything shepherds all gathered round up above the star shines down a baby changes everything choir of angels sing glory to the newborn king a baby changes everything 
My whole life has turned around. I was lost, but now I'm found. A baby changes everything. Oh, come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise in this place. This child, this baby, he changed history. As we know it, but the most important question in this room today is not so much what difference Jesus made in human history. That's obvious. The better question is this, what difference has he made in your history? Can I tell you today, let his story change your story. Let his story, the history of who he is, amen. And we got to ask ourselves, when, when did we meet him? When did we come to know him? When's the moment that that life transformation took place in your life? And I want you to think about that just for a moment. Some of you uh, may have to think back a few years. You've been saved for a long time. But I want you to think about that moment, that time that life transformation came into your life. That moment that you knelt or you were standing or you was riding in your car or wherever you was at, that moment that you said, Lord, I want to follow you. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that you are the Lord. That you was born to change everything. Amen. We got to ask ourselves, when did we meet him? Many, many know him. But do we actually know him? Do we have, actually have relationship with Him? It's not about religion today. Can I tell you, it's about relationship. It's about having a relationship with the King that came to change everything in this world. I know this world is, is a better place because of Him, but don't you want to know what a difference He can make in your life? Don't you want to experience this life change in your own life? And before I got saved, I didn't know how much He really loved me. How much He blessed me. How much He forgave me. Come on. How much He's given me wisdom in my life. He's made all the difference in my life. Everything that revolves around my life, my family, my home, my children, my marriage, everything, everything, everything's changed because of Him. 